Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about the diagnostic algorithm in ascites, as well as what ascites really is, and how we can diagnose and treat it, and what complications untreated ascites can lead to. What is ascites and why does it develop? Ascites refers to the abnormal accumulation of fluid within the abdominal cavity. It is characterized by the presence of excessive fluid in the peritoneal space, which is the space between the abdominal organs and the inner lining of the abdominal wall, called peritoneum. Ascites can be a sign of an underlying medical condition and is often associated with liver disease, particularly advanced liver cirrhosis. The normal volume of peritoneal fluid in healthy people is generally less than 50 milliliter. The peritoneal fluid serves various functions, such as lubricating the abdominal organs and facilitating their movement, providing a protective barrier against infections, and aiding in the transportation of certain substances within the abdominal cavity. Ascites can be caused by many different conditions. Cirrhosis is the most common cause of ascites. It is a late-stage liver disease characterized by irreversible scarring of the liver tissue. Cirrhosis can result from various conditions such as chronic viral hepatitis, alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, autoimmune hepatitis, and others. Ascites can also develop due to increased pressure within the portal vein system, a major blood vessel that carries blood from the digestive organs to the liver. Portal hypertension can be caused by liver cirrhosis, hepatic vein obstruction, as in the butt chiari syndrome, or portal vein thrombosis. Certain types of cancer particularly abdominal cancers, such as liver, ovarian, pancreatic or gastrointestinal cancers, can cause ascites. Cancer cells may spread to the peritoneal cavity and result in fluid accumulation. Another cause is advanced heart failure. It can lead to fluid retention and increased pressure within the veins, including the portal vein. This can result in the development of ascites. Severe kidney disease or kidney failure can cause fluid retention and contribute to the development of ascites. Ascites can occur as a result of an infection in the abdominal cavity, known as spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. It often occurs in individuals with underlying liver cirrhosis or other causes of portal hypertension. Other less common causes of ascites include pancreatic disease, such as pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer, autoimmune disorders like for example systemic lupus erythematosus, tuberculosis and certain med medications like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or different chemotherapy agents. How can we find out that a patient has ascites when doing a physical examination? During a physical examination, several signs can suggest the presence of ascites. We should be suspicious of ascites when we observe any of the following. The abdomen appears enlarged and tense, often with a rounded or protuberant shape. Ascites causes an accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity, leading to progressive abdominal distension. Shifting dullness is a classical physical finding in ascites. With the patient lying flat, percussion of the abdomen produces a dull sound over the dependent areas where fluid accumulates. When the patient is turned onto their side, the fluid shifts and percussion produces a resonant sound over the previously dull areas. The fluid wave test is performed by having the patient place their hand or the edge of the examiner's hand on the midline of the abdomen. The examiner then taps on one side of the abdomen 
while feeling for a transmitted fluid wave on the opposite side. A positive fluid wave suggests the presence of ascites. With a patient lying flat, bulging flanks can be observed when there is a significant amount of ascites. The lateral flanks protrude and bulge outward due to the fluid accumulation. Ascites can cause increased intra-abdominal pressure, which may lead to the development or enlargement of an umbilical hernia. This can manifest as a visible or palpable bulge around the umbilicus. In severe cases of ascites, increased venous pressure may cause engorgement of the veins on the abdominal wall. These veins may appear prominent or dilated. What is a diagnostic algorithm? A diagnostic algorithm is a step-by-step -step approach or flowchart used by doctors to guide the evaluation and diagnosis of a particular medical condition. It is a systematic method that helps doctors to navigate through various diagnostic tests, examinations and assessments to reach an accurate diagnosis. A diagnostic algorithm typically starts with a set of initial steps, such as taking a detailed medical history, conducting a physical examination, and performing specific tests or investigations. Based on the results of these initial steps, the algorithm directs the doctor to further diagnostic tests or specialized evaluations to narrow down the possible causes and to reach a definitive diagnosis. As the algorithm progresses, the tests usually become more invasive and time-consuming. The diagnostic algorithm for ascites involves a step-by-step -step approach to determine the underlying cause. As just mentioned, we typically start with a history and physical exam, where we obtain a detailed medical history, including any known liver disease, heart disease or other relevant conditions. We want to perform a thorough physical examination, including abdominal examination, to assess the size, tenderness and presence of any masses or organ enlargement. After that, we usually perform a series of laboratory tests. We usually perform a routine blood test, including a complete blood count, liver function tests, kidney function tests, coagulation profile and serum electrolytes. We also assess serum albumin and total protein levels to evaluate the patient's nutritional status and hepatic synthetic function. We can also perform a serum ascites albumin gradient, often abbreviated as SAAG, calculation by subtracting the ascites fluid albumin level from the serum albumin level. This serum ascites albumin gradient helps to differentiate between portal hypertension-related ascites, where the SAAG is equal to or higher than 1.1 gram per deciliter, and non-portal hypertension causes, where the gradient is lower. The next step is the ascites fluid analysis. Here we check the obtained fluid of the ascites for its different components, which can help us to find out what the underlying cause is. To do this test, we first have to perform a diagnostic paracentesis to obtain a sample of ascites fluid for analysis. Then we evaluate the ascites fluid for cell count, differential, total protein, albumin, glucose, lactate dehydrogenase and microbiological culture. The acidic fluid analysis helps to determine the cause of ascites such as infection, malignancy, or other inflammatory conditions. We can also obtain different imaging studies. The least invasive imaging study to perform is the abdominal ultrasound. We use this to assess the liver size and morphology. We also want to check for the presence of liver lesions and to evaluate for portal hypertension-related findings like splenomegaly or collateral blood supply. Additional imaging studies, such as computer tomography scan or magnetic resonance imaging, may be necessary to further evaluate the liver, pancreas 
or other abdominal organs if indicated. In some cases, we may need additional evaluations. This typically includes specialized tests or consultations based on the clinical suspicion or findings from initial evaluation. These may include viral hepatitis serology, autoimmune markers, and alpha fetoprotein level. How can we treat ascites? The primary goal of ascites treatment is to alleviate symptoms, reduce fluid accumulation, to address the underlying cause, and to prevent complications. Restricting dietary sodium intake is an essential component of ascites management. Lowering sodium intake helps to reduce fluid retention and can be effective in mild cases of ascites. Diuretic medications such as pironolactone and furosemide are commonly used to increase urine output and promote fluid elimination from the body. These medications are often prescribed in combination and should be carefully monitored to achieve the desired diuretic effect without causing electrolyte imbalance or kidney dysfunction. Large volume paracentesis involves the removal of large amounts of fluid from the abdominal cavity using a needle and catheter. Paracentesis can provide immediate relief of symptoms and reduce the risk of complications in cases of tense or refractory ascites. It can be combined with albumin infusion to prevent circulatory dysfunction. In some cases, albumin infusion may be recommended alongside large volume paracentesis or as a standalone treatment. Albumin is administered to restore oncotic pressure and prevent the development of circulatory dysfunction. Transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, for short TIPS, is a procedure that involves the creation of a shunt between the portal vein and hepatic vein using a stent. TIPS helps to redirect blood flow and reduce portal hypertension, thereby relieving ascites. TIPS is typically considered in cases of refractory ascites a recurrent fluid accumulation despite medical management. For patients with advanced liver disease and refractory ascites, liver transplantation may be the ultimate treatment option. Liver transplantation addresses the underlying cause of ascites and can provide a long-term solution. What are complications of ascites? Ascites, if left untreated or poorly managed, can lead to several complications. These complications may arise due to the underlying cause of ascites or the effects of the accumulated fluid in the abdominal cavity. Acidic fluid provides a favorable environment for bacterial growth. Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is an infection of the acidic fluid without an evident source of infection. It is a serious complication that can lead to sepsis if not promptly diagnosed and treated. In advanced liver disease and severe portal hypertension, ascites can be associated with the development of hepatorenal syndrome. Hepatorenal syndrome is characterized by kidney dysfunction, reduced urine output, and impaired kidney function. It is a life threatening complication that requires immediate medical attention. Ascites can cause dilutional hyponatremia, which is an imbalance in the body's electrolyte levels. Excessive fluid accumulation leads to a decrease in the concentration of sodium in the bloodstream resulting in hyponatremia. Severe hyponatremia can cause neurological symptoms and can be potentially life-threatening. Ascites can increase the risk of other abdominal infections, such as peritonitis or abscess formation. These infections may occur due to perforation of hollow organs, biliary tract infections, or other sources of intra-abdominal infection. Large amounts of acidic fluid can exert pressure on the diaphragm, compromising lung expansion and leading to respiratory difficulties. This can result in shortness of breath, reduced exercise tolerance, 
and increased susceptibility to respiratory infections. Ascites can be associated with protein and nutrient loss. The accumulation of fluid in the abdomen can impair appetite, nutrient absorption and lead to malnutrition. This can result in weight loss, muscle wasting and overall decline in health. Ascites and its associated complications can significantly impact a person's quality of life. Symptoms such as abdominal distension, discomfort, breathlessness and fatigue can limit daily activities and overall well-being. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.